Hello and welcome to Student Chambers. So today we will be looking at the Level 1 Electrical Installations Picture Card Activity. Our learning aim, identify various tools and equipment used in the electrical industry. Our learning objective is we will look at various images of tools and equipment used in the construction industry and learners will have to identify the tools and equipment used by electricians. Now, the benefit of this video is that sometimes you will come across some tools that you're not too sure of the names. So this will give you a basic understanding of the different sort of tools and the different types of tools used in the construction industry. Now, all the photographs that we've got on this video have all come, majority have come from Screwfix and we have referenced them back to Screwfix so if you'd like to buy any of them you have all the product codes there. So again we do not own any of the images shown in this video. So the first, we all look at the images that we have, they all look like hammers but they are different types of hammers used for different things. So the first one, a Stanley fiberglass claw hammer. So that's your mainly used hammer in, in domestic properties. The claw behind it, so if you're going to be lifting up floorboards, you can hook it with the claw and then you can pull up your nail safely. Second type is a club hammer, so if you're going to be having to break any material apart, that's the hammer that you'd use. And our forged steel fiberglass sledgehammer, now that's a very big hammer. I doubt electricians will be using that in their day-to-day -day runnings, but again, you know what a sledgehammer looks like. And now we have a forged steel combi ratchet spanner set and we have an adjustable wrench. So depending on what you're going to be needing it for, you may need to use a combi ratchet spanner set or it might be easier to use an adjustable wrench. So for the electrical learners, if you're going to be working on steel wired armour and then you may need to use an adjustable wrench and a spanner set perhaps to tighten up your bolts. So we have a monoblock tap spanner set and we have a pipe wrench. So again this is not just specific to the electrical trade. You may come across it in different trades. For example a pipe wrench will be used by plumbers as well. You know for if it's going to be using it for pipe work. Metric hex keys. Now, I'm sure a lot of you have assembled some flat packed furniture before. So, if you buy from Argos or IKEA, these keys are very useful. And a big thanks to the manufacturers because a lot of them also include their hex keys with the furniture that you've actually bought. But it's always good to have your own set just in case if you lose it. A steel tap and die set. Now, if you're going to be working on steel conduit, you'll need it to for threading purposes. Now, specific to electricians, now, why can't we use normal screwdrivers, which are non-insulated, to work on electrical equipment? And the answer is protection. Non-insulated screwdrivers, in case of a fault or if the circuit it was live, then we wouldn't have the full protection and we could get an electric shock and we will be in harm's way. Whereas using insulated screwdrivers will protect us. And as we can see that if you look at on the right hand side the specification, it's tested to a thousand volts. 
So we know that this this can withstand a thousand up to a thousand volts. So our lives are in good hand. So it's always worthwhile buying good quality tools because it's for your protection and also they will last longer. Just examples of different types of screwdrivers that we have, a flathead or a posi. Now we have different types of wire strippers. We have an automatic wire stripper which personally I'd rather use a side cutter to strip wires but the CK automatic wire stripper also has a good crimping function onto it as well as you can see on the handle the CK cable cutter which is very good if you need to cut different sizes of cables and is very sturdy so as you can see there are different types of tools that we have yep you've guessed it, we have different types of long nose side cutting pliers we have a bent long nose side cutting pliers different should ask is that you might be working in hard to reach areas so imagine if it's a very tight space and you've got to terminate some cables then you might need a bent long nose side cutting pliers so depending on the situation that you're working within We have our CK, so you can get different brands, right? And it's not because I favour one brand over another, but the majority of tools which are coming through Screwfix, you had CK amongst other brands as well. So VDE side cutters, very good if you need to strip cables or cut cables, twin and earth, or our single core. Again, these are individually tested to 10,000 volts safe live working up to a thousand volts so if we have to work live then these tools here will certainly provide us a great deal of protection and if we look at our combi cutter it's the same as our side cutters apart from a difference that it has also a screw cutting device in there as you can see with a little hole on our combi cutter we can cut 3.5 millimeter patris screw shears so we have a multi tool there this is one of my favorite favorites the combi cutter because if you're installing sometimes you might be putting on um, a two gang socket outlet when you're putting the front plate on the screws might be a bit too big or you might need some adjustments and this combi cutter comes in hand. We have different types of equipment again. Earth clamps used for our earthing, a full weight earth block. Now we've got some great pictures provided from meteorelectrical.com. Now their pictures are fantastic. They show you very good diagrams of how it looks like now when we're looking at external riser bends this is for our cable tray this is what that looks like so that's a 90 degree external riser bend and it's a 90 degree internal riser bend so as you can see the differences in the two how they're positioned so external and internal and then we've got a perforated cable tray system so it shows you the different types so we have a horizontal T an inside vertical riser a straight tray reducer an elbow so this diagram is fantastic and it's from BBN, BBN Industries and it shows you where you'd use the different types of the cable tray management system And as we can see, that they're all adhering to BSEN standards. So it's our British standard Euro norm. And here we can just see, it's just showing you in depth what a horizontal elbow looks like, or angle type, horizontal T, 
horizontal cross. So we have different types. So BBN Industries provides a radius type and an angle type. So straight tray reducer, vertical riser, outside vertical riser, and again it goes for the same. Cable ladder management systems. So it's the same as our tray, but this will be our cable ladder management system. So depending on what your requirements are, you may need a tray or you might use a cable ladder. Now we move on to the materials. So, as you can see, we have different types. We have a galvanized metal conduit three box for our first one. Because as you can see, it goes straight and straight through. Moving on to our second one, a galvanized metal conduit angle box. Because it goes in an angle. We might need a T box depending on the requirements. And then to make sure that it's covered safely, we have a galvanized metal conduit box lid. So just remember what the different types of conduit angle boxes we have. So we have a coupler, so it gives you an idea of what a coupler looks like. A brass bush, metal lock nut, a metal edge to lock rings. So you've got to remember the different types of materials we have and what the names are. Now we have different space bar saddles. So we can have a distance saddle as you can see on the saddle that it's got a distance on there. You have a spacer bar saddles. You know, and we can also have, so we have our our steel space bar saddles, we might have our PVC space bar sad saddles. And just to bring your attention to the saddle clips chrome. So this is used for mounting and retaining piping on tu tubing. This is for mainly for plumbers, they might be using the running pipe work. And it's always good with screw fix that when you look at the specifications, they'll tell you where it's going to be used. So the construction material plumbing. Different types of male adapters that we have, conduit couplings, inspection bends, what a female adapter looks like. So again, as part of your assessment, you may get asked the different types of adapt adapters we have, whether it's a male or a female, whether you have an inspection bend, conduit couplings. We have hook plates. So for hook plates, you might be using if you're holding up any sort of lighting or any chain lighting, then that's where you may use a hook plate. Now, so we have a lot of names for these, unofficial names in the industry, spirit level, spirit bulb. Now, we get different types. So we could have a longer spirit level, or the shorter ones are known as the torpedo level. Now, the torpedo level we may use to put on our one gang or two gang back boxes to make sure they're going to be straight. And our longer spirit levels might be used in different applications, not only limited to the electrical industry. Different types of saws we have, a junior hacksaw or a main saw. We have different types of drill bits. So this is for a masonry drill bit. So if we're going to be drilling into brickwork, this is the type of drill bit we'd use. 
always making sure that we use the correct drill bit otherwise we can damage the tools that we have remember the sharp bit of a if you get a drill bit like this with a pointy top that's for wood so make sure you don't use the wrong drill, drill bit for the wrong application our HS drill bit is for metal wood and plastic and the different types of back boxes that we have so with these back boxes you know we be using for dry lining so as you get to see we have different types of back boxes so we have one for if it's going to be for our light fittings or if it's going to be for our power and we have our normal back boxes which are if they're going to be putting onto a wood surface so depending on what your requirements are you can see the different boxes available one gang and two gang and if we're going to be embedding it into the wall so if you're going to be putting it onto blocks or inside of or inside of concrete or in the brickwork we'll be using our galvanized steel so it's important you make sure that you know you've got the right back box for the right application different types of switches one gang two way light switch or we can have a two gang two way again we could have a two gang socket outlet or a one gang socket outlet so the DP stands for down pole double pole I beg your pardon so it's protected by a 13 amp fuse so now we have a double pole 13 amp switched fuse connection unit with a flex outlet and we have a fused connection unit for a fan perhaps so you can get different fused connection units for different appliances or for installs so again we have a 2 gang we have a 45 amp neon white it could be used for our cook outlet So as you can see we have different types here and they all conform to British standards. We have an isolator switch for a small extractor fan. And then we've got our fuse box. So as you can see in our fuse box we've got some MCBs, different types. So on this one we've got 3 times 6 amp, 2 times 16 amp, 4 times 32 amp and 1 times 40 amp. Now if you ever need additional RCDs, so you can uh, MCBs, you can always purchase them separately. But just make sure that you're using the same brand. So there's another different type of our consumer unit here. So depending upon your needs, you've got different types of consumer units. This is our miniature circuit breaker. So as you can already see, you know, a lot of the, the main companies which are providing the products they have a lot of information on there. So if you'd like to learn more, you can always just go on their website to learn about the different types of breakers or any types of equipment they have. With Screwfix, they provide a lot of information on their site. So that's one of the reasons why I've used them. We have an RCBO, which is also 
a residual current breaker with overcurrent protection, so an RCD and an MCB both together, working together. We have an RCD. So you can see how an RCD looks different to an MCB. And we have an isolator switch. I'm sure a lot of you have seen these in certain parts of workshops, or in factories, or industrial areas. And this is our lockout kit. So always remember that if you're working on any equipment that you make it safe before you work on it. Now just by turning off the circuit breaker for the unit for the circuit you're going to be working on that's not very safe because somebody else could come along and switch it back on while you're working on it and that means you'd get an electric shock so always make sure that you've got your correct procedures you followed your safe isolation procedure and you lock it off I hope you found this video helpful um, and this is mainly aimed for electrical level 1 installation students because part of your picture card assessment activity you will be asked the different names of different appliances but also this helps general members of the public and people which are wanting to learn more about the different types of accessories, tools and materials you use. So I hope you found this helpful. Please give us your feedback and share the video with your friends and family. Thank you.